One of the more interesting 22s to appear recently, and I think they came out maybe 2014 or 15, somewhere in there. I'm usually a little slow in getting the newest guns because I wait until they're used guns. Um, they're made in Austria by ISSC. I don't know much about the parent company, but we all know Austria makes great rifles. What caught my attention when I saw it in a magazine was that it's a toggle action, and it's probably easiest to view the toggle action from the side like this. So you can see it's a straight pull mechanism. That's in the locked position. And then you pull this back. And as these elbows, as this elbow fails, they're in line when the action is closed and then um, not in line as you open the action. And it's only my angle here that makes it look difficult. It's very, very, very smooth, very easy. And some people were telling me that it's very similar to a, a Russian biathlon rifle. They couldn't agree whether it's called an Ishmash or an Ishmesh, but biathlon rifles, I think they have to be quite reliable and fast. We're all familiar with the Anschutz. I think it's a Fortner action. That locks using bearings, but the Russian Ishmash apparently is a toggle action, like the ISSC. And I'll talk more about this excellent rifle uh, in a moment, but when I bought it, I immediately thought of um, the books and other guns I've owned over the years. And this is from Hatcher's Notebook, which I think we've looked at before. That's, this is a book that probably belongs on every gun person's shelf. And in the book, there is a study of semi-automatic actions because Hatcher, the author of the book, was with the armed forces and they were developing semi-automatic rifles already at the time of the First World War and before. This is a sporting rifle made by Rheinmetall. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The inventor Karl Heinemann, um, German obviously, and you can see the toggle on the side of the action and the magazine on the other side of the action. Quite an interesting configuration this shape might remind you of the ISSC, which I've just shown you. And then maybe more familiar to you is the Pedersen. John Pedersen was a fantastic inventor, American inventor. And this toggle, as you can see, again, the, the, the toggles and the pin um, pivots to the top of the action. So obviously this would be tricky. For scope mounting purposes, it was an excellent design. I think it was in caliber 0 0.276, 276 Pedersen. And you may remember John Pedersen designed the Pedersen de device, which was adopted by the military. The Pedersen device was quite clever, and I saw a stripped bolt. I owned it for a little while for a Pedersen device, which was quite hard to get a hold of because the Pedersen device, uh, apparently most of them were rounded up and destroyed, but what the Pedersen device accomplished was making a small arm, uh, more or less a pistol cartridge, operate in the 1903 Springfield. And if you run across the Springfield with an oval cut in the side of the receiver, that cut, I believe, was accomplished with EDM, uh, electrical discharge machining, if I'm not wrong. And that allowed essentially an automatic bolt to be installed instead of the customary manually operated bolt and the bolt had a spring in it and all the other components so the the Springfield rifle was turned into a semi-automatic pistol extremely interesting and there must be stuff on YouTube about that in any event Pedersen who invented the Pedersen device and a number of other firearms made this toggle action submitted it for trials against the Garand there were other competitors as well and I invite you to read Hatcher's book just because the fantastic um, detail of how that whole process unfolded and how uh, the Garand in the end was, or Garand, there are many pronunciations, <laughs> I know. And, um, but feel free to correct me, it's all good. And um, so the Pedersen wasn't adopted, the, the, the Garand was. But that's a lot of talking about the toggle action, which I really like. And just as a further footnote, if any of you own an 1873, 
uh, lever action Winchester or lever action Winchester, that actually is the same toggle action except the toggles collapse to the bottom when you work the lever. I have one, it's in a vault that's so locked up that it's difficult for me to even get in there, so maybe I was a little lazy today, but we've got a lot of things happening here, maybe too many. But you get the idea that I like the toggle action. I think it's a, a very um, compelling way of delaying the opening of the action. And as you probably all know, with a semi-automatic rifle, all you're trying to do is delay the opening of the action until the bullet has ac exited the muzzle because then the pressure is equalized with the atmosphere and the energy from the cartridge going off can be stored in springs. So the toggle is a very interesting way of delaying the opening. I even thought of looking into a little more. Anyway, and then I took out my Luger carbine. This Luger, you probably, if you own Lugers, you'll know this is a strong spring. So I don't want to have an accident with it, but you'll see. I'll try to hold that. You can see between my fingers, that's the same thing as the Pedersen rifle and the um, Ryan Metal but those were, of course, in different firearms. So you can see the toggle was used and there it's locked and then when the cartridge is fired, the toggle resists opening and then opens. Like I said, I have to fight it to show you that cool weapon if you ever a chance to fire these. And getting back to the ISSC, um, I had a bunch of people caution me, a uh, fellow collector bought one and said didn't work very well. What I usually do with any firearm and when I'm kind of studying it before I take it shooting, I, you know, I try a cartridge and right away when I inserted a cartridge in the chamber of the ISSC, I could tell this is a pretty tight chamber, probably, I don't know, to target specifications, which may be an effort to get excellent accuracy. And this did provide excellent accuracy, contrary to what some people experience. And a lot of times I get really negative reports about guns and sometimes they're even delivered to me as faulty or inaccurate and I have to say I must have really good luck because uh, once again this this rifle worked perfectly but I was leading up to a point on the chamber test because it was so tight I thought well brass isn't always perfect or clean so what I did is before I started shooting I just gave the chamber a shot of, of um, ballistol but any lubricant lubricant would do now some people would say that's not a good idea because it does increase back thrust and it probably does because if you lubricate a chamber then the brass can't cling to the walls of the chamber as efficiently but that's what i wanted to accomplish i wanted the brass of the 22 case to move backwards if necessary to engage the extractor because people were telling me there were extraction problems and every straight pull mechanism is lacking the camming action of a turn bolt, if you can follow all that. So I gave it a shot of Ballistol every once in a while. I, it comes with three magazines, it comes with this hard case. Um, I can't remember what I paid for it, I think $400 and uh, it came with the rings but it didn't come with the scope. I just put a Tasco scope. Some of you write me, how come I use shabby scopes and I'm not saying Tasco is a shabby scope actually I think it's excellent. I could probably put something more expensive on but as it turned out I was just heading out deer hunting and so I just threw what happened to be on my on my table. I'm glad I did it worked perfectly and it's I think I'll leave it. Um, getting back to the operation magazines worked perfectly no problem with feeding. Um, this is obviously an action uh, full of friction. There are a lot of parts moving here. So um, you can see how easily it moves. I am not afraid to lubricate this kind of mechanism. The Pedersen rifle was the same. If you have a toggle and the Luger is the same. These are not actions, I, I, in my experience, they're not actions to run dry. Conclusion, excellent rifle, fantastic action. I'm glad they went to the trouble of making them. Um, somebody should make that Rheinmetall gun but with a, just a manual action because the, the that toggle is so clean so simple and compared to 
the contrivances of other straight pull designs such as the Blazer R8, which is a great rifle as everybody knows, but you got a lot of pieces there and a lot of things happening. This is so simple, easy to understand and handles pressure. Um, of course it's not a front locking action, but for a 22, I don't know that that's a relevant thing. Um, that's probably all I can say about it. It has, uh, uh, you know, I think plastic stocks are mostly kind of despicable, but I, this is what I got because it was a used one and it's definitely practical and serviceable and all the other good things people say about plastic as you know I'm just leaning toward wood whenever I can um, get a wood stock and I think they do offer a wood stock. In any event there's the review of the ISSC. I think I had a few messages about this rifle. I wouldn't hesitate to buy one. The safety's in the trigger guard. Um, I went out with a uh, 50 rounds or something like that, but I had more in the truck and I think I ended up shooting this like 250 or 300 times. It's just so much fun to shoot. I was even shooting it, uh, whatever it was, 150 yards and um, excellent accuracy. You know, I was shooting offhand, so mostly that was, if I was, if I was missing, it was because of me. That's about it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the requests on this rifle. I won't be selling it anytime soon and uh, please join me on patreon and of course subscribe it's almost urgent that you help the channel because as you know everything's demonetized now which i've said many times and uh, join me on instagram as well I'm trying to build a little community there thank you very much for being here and we'll see you all next time